and welcome back. This is going to be a movie haul from my usual uh, sources of video borrowing. And in case anyone has noticed that I have not really been getting any films from the University of Baltimore Diversity Office lately, I just want you to know that my commitment to diversity has not waned, but unfortunately the Diversity Office's commitment to getting new DVDs appears to have. So that's why I'm not getting anything from them lately. And now, onward. I was fortunate at um, the Johns Hopkins University Library to be able to get two films from the McNaughton Popular Viewing Collection. First one I got was The Guard, starring Brendan Gleeson and Don Cheadle. This is a sort of odd couple cop buddy comedy, and I, I, mean, I found it actually kind of a standard entry in that genre. It was cute and entertaining, but um, I can't say I highly, highly recommend it. There's nothing wrong with it. just. I didn't find it terribly exceptional. And then I got The Ides of March, and I really, really liked this. A lot of, I, I'd heard sort of in the grapevine that it wasn't really well reviewed and it didn't do too well at the box office, and I really don't know what people's problem is. I thought Ryan, I'm a pretty big Ryan Gosling fan, and I thought he gave one of the best performances of his career, which is actually saying a lot because he's been in a lot of pretty interesting movies and given some good performances. But um, I, I thought he gave a great performance. I thought the supporting cast was really good. And I think some people were picking on it because George Clooney directed it and they were saying he let his politics get into it or whatever. First of all, I mean, it's a political movie. It's a movie about a political campaign. There's going to be politics. But I felt like the candidates have their political beliefs, but I really didn't feel like the film was preachy or overly political at all. I thought it was great. Um, I, I saw in the opening credits that it was based on a play, and it really wasn't stagey at all. I just thought it was a really good film, um, pretty devastating as a matter of fact, and also really exciting without being sort of your standard silly chase-ridden thriller. So I would highly recommend this. Don't let the haters convince you otherwise. And then I got Tarkovsky's film Solaris, and I have to thank Let Me Log In 90 for finally convincing me to see this thing by commenting on one of my other videos that if I liked Stalker, I would probably like Solaris. I don't know why I put off seeing this for so long, because I'm a pretty big Tarkovsky fan, and this was the only one of his um, full-length feature films that I hadn't seen. And this, it was kind of cool getting it on VHS, because I like the VHS for the really long ones because they give you two tapes and it's like, it's kind of like they respect the movie, you know, they're like, this is a really long movie, we're giving you two tapes. But um, I wound up quite liking this. I, I did find it a little different from some of his other films just in that it felt, there's, there's definitely some of that Tarkovsky strangeness, but it just felt a lot more straightforward than most of his other films where you can be kind of watching and saying, all right, I really have no idea what's going on, but it's Tarkovsky, so it's cool. Um, it was based on the book by Stanislav Lem, which I have not yet read, but, I mean, Stalker was based on a book too, and that one was just completely weird and sort of impossible to tell what was going on. So I quite like this and would recommend it to, if you're a Tarkovsky fan, I think you'd definitely like it. Except, actually, for this friend I have, who's a big Tarkovsky expert. I mean, he did his master's thesis on Tarkovsky, and he hates this movie. Um, and he, the way he put it was, Tarkovsky had no business making a film set on a space station. And I sort of see what he was getting at, in that just because a lot of it is set on the space station, um, it's a science fiction film, obviously, um, you don't get a lot of those really beautiful, that really beautiful Tarkovsky look where he's focusing on the natural world and the outdoors, although there is some of that. But I don't know. I, I would recommend this, although I obviously am not a Tarkovsky expert. Um, so anyway, I, I would say if you are a Tarkovsky fan, there's a lot to like. And if you have not seen any of his films before and are kind of put off by his reputation for being sort of slow moving and inaccessible. I think this would be a really good one to start with as well. And next I got, oh this is horrible, I'm going to try to get the, see if I can get the box out of here so you can actually see what 
what the film looks like. Ah, that's better. I got Late Chrysanthemums, which is directed by uh, Mikio Naruz, who also who directed one of my favorite films, When a Woman Ascends the Stairs. Um, he's a pretty famous Japanese director, not quite as well known here as a lot of his contemporaries, but definitely well worth exploring. This is only the second film of his I've seen, but I'm really enjoying it so far. The It's a story of a retired geisha who has turned, uh, turned to money lending as her profession and what happens when a former flame enters her life. And it's also about a couple of her friends who are also retired geishas and the problems they're encountering. So, so far I would certainly recommend it. And then I got Beauties of the Night, directed by Renee Claire. And this one I'm really excited to see. I'm rather a Renee Claire fan, although I was just thinking about it and realizing I have not seen a lot of his really classic early films like Le Million or Anou la, la Liberté. Um, what I have seen are a bunch of his English language films because he later had a career in Hollywood. I think he came here during the war. I'm not 100% sure. And he also did a little film in French called Beauty and the Devil, which I really enjoyed, sort of a take on the Faust legend. But this one is in French, and it's a fable about a history teacher, it's a history teacher, a oh, music teacher, sorry, who um, tries to escape his drab existence through fantasizing about being in different time periods, and in each time period he meets a beautiful woman and has a romance. And uh, Gina Lola Brigida is in this, which is exciting, because she's one of my favorite actresses. Have not had a chance to see this yet, but I'm looking forward to it. And then I got Design for Living, which I'm really excited to see. It's directed by the great Ernst Lubitsch and has a great cast, Frederick March, Gary Cooper, Miriam Hopkins, and it's supposed to be pretty risque. It's, I, I believe the characters wind up uh, setting up a ménage à trois, and it was made pre-code, and I uh, have not had a chance to see it yet, but really looking forward to it. And then I got Z and Two Knots by Peter Greenaway, and have not seen this one yet either. But it's weird how much of a Greenaway fan I've become in just the past couple of months. I'd seen a few of his films over the past few years, and I would usually come away with from them just thinking like, oh, that was okay, that was kind of weird, but not really liking them all that much. And then I saw a film called Night Watching that he did, I think, I was going to say it's one of his earlier films, but I'm actually not sure. And I, I, I quite liked that one. I liked it better than the other ones I'd seen. And then I wound up seeing The Draftsman's Contract, which I absolutely loved. I mean, really loved. It's probably, it probably enters the pantheon of one of my favorite movies. Um, just really a great, strange, beautiful, kind of creepy film. And then after that, I saw The Belly of an Architect, which I quite liked. I didn't love it quite as much as The Draftsman's Contract, but I thought it was really good. So I'm like, hey, this guy is worth exploring after all. So I checked out this one, and this one looks really bizarre. I sort of wonder if my reaction is going to fall more in line with what I thought of the other films of his I'd seen, but who knows? I hope it's really good. And this one too I have not seen yet. This is a documentary called Edge of Dreaming, and as you may know from some of my book hauls, I'm really interested in the ideas of dreaming and lucid dreaming and what dreams mean in our consciousness, and this is this, this filmmaker's exploration of her own dreams. Apparently she has a prophetic dream about the death of her horse, and then she dreams that she's going to die at age 48, and she is 48, and she sets out to try to figure out what all this means. And next from University of Baltimore, I got the film Watchmen. I actually checked this out quite a while ago, tried to watch it, and I think I got maybe half an hour in, or maybe even more than that, and just was not feeling it at all. But th this was before I read the graphic novel. I read the graphic novel a little while ago, and really, really liked it, and sort of had in the back of my mind that maybe I'd want to try the film again now that I kind of had the background, because a lot of the film, it just, it just wasn't speaking to me. I didn't get it. And then I discovered that Patrick, or figure, I guess I vaguely knew, I don't know, that Patrick Wilson was in this. 
And Patrick Wilson has become one of my favorite actors really pretty recently. I've started watching this show he's in called A Gifted Man, which is on at 8 p.m. on, on Fridays on CBS. Check your local listings. Um, but I've just really become a fan of his recently. And so I was like, okay, Patrick Wilson's in it. I really like the book. Time to give it another shot. So we shall see. And then from Stevenson University, I got this documentary, Street Fight. This is about the 2002 race or mayoral race in Newark, featuring Cory Booker, who is this fresh young face against the established political machine represented by incumbent mayor Sharp James. This was really just an infuriating film to watch. I mean, not the film itself, it's a really good film, but just the subject matter is just oh, maybe so angry at certain points. But um, highly recommended, really interesting, and a uh, good look at how kind of old-fashioned machine politics works. And next, from the Sights and Sounds Department of the Enoch Pratt Free Library, I got The Black Pirate, a classic silent film starring Douglas Fairbanks Sr. I just love this. This was a wonderful, fun, swashbuckling tale. Although, you start to wonder, when are these bad guys going to figure out? You don't mess with Douglas Fairbanks. He's going to get you. He, um, he plays a pirate who, or he's not a pirate, he's um, on a ship, and his ship gets taken by a bloodthirsty crew of pirates, and he is the sole survivor and disguises himself as a pirate and sets out for revenge. And this is just a wonderful film. One of the reasons I like Douglas Fairbanks so much is that he just, he always looks like he's having such a great time in these films. And, you know, when the actor's having a good time, you wind up having a good time too. So I highly recommend this. And unfortunately, I cannot highly recommend this one. This is The Beach, and uh, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, as you can see. And I wanted to see this because I read the book a while ago, the novel by Alex Garland, and I quite liked the book. And I knew that the film had been kind of um, lambasted at the bottom when it was uh, when it first came out. But I wanted to give it a chance, and I got about an hour in and just couldn't do it. I just found it really boring, and it didn't have kind of the interesting ideas that the book was playing with, so unfortunately. And last but not least, I got A Damsel in Distress, and maybe there are some of you out there who could resist a film starring Fred Astaire, Joan Fontaine, George Burns, and Gracie Allen, written by P.G. Woodhouse and directed by George Stevens. If so, you are made of stronger stuff than I am. I really liked this. It is pretty fluffy, but just a really nice, fun film if you want to maybe turn your brain off a little bit, but still have a really good time. And if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me for my next video.